Welcome back to Ship Faced, everybody. For the model I am about to show you, please note that the Roller 3D created it, and I'm the one who painted it for her Dazzle paint scheme in World War I. Which is today's episode, Olympic at War. As we all know, Olympic was the first in her class in the trio of superliners for the White Star Line and for a while was the largest moving object ever made. Almost exactly 113 years ago today, on October 20th, 1910, RMS Olympic was launched. By August 4th, 1914, Great Britain had entered World War I. Just a few days prior, Germany had invaded an ally of Great Britain, France, and had plans to invade the rest of Europe. Archduke Franz Ferdinand had been assassinated, and the world had split into separate alliances and gone to war. As a result, the services of RMS Olympic were requisitioned by British Parliament into the Royal Navy, converting her into a troop ship from a luxurious ocean liner. It's important to note that by this time in her career in 1914, Olympic had already received her post-Titanic disaster refit, meaning that she had included in her construction a second inner skin creating a double hull, the height of the watertight bulkheads from bow to stern increased to the full height of the hull, and she also added an additional watertight bulkhead increasing the number from 16 to 17 watertight compartments. She also dramatically increased her lifeboat capacity from 16 to 48. HMT Olympic's first wartime assignment was to aid the ailing vessel, the battleship Audacious. Olympic had neared the coast of Ireland, completing a transatlantic voyage, helping American troops, when she picked up a distress signal from the battleship. They heard reports that the battleship had struck a mine and was taking on water. It was decided by the, the strike group that Olympic would tow HMS Audacious to the nearest port. However, after three failing attempts, the ship exploded, having taken on too much water in her engine and magazine, and was a total loss and sank. Olympic picked up 500 survivors, and nearby vessels took on the rest. Afterwards, Olympic was retrofitted once again to enhance her trooping capabilities, increasing the capacity to 6,000 Allied troops. Olympic's next assignment was to aid in the infamous Gallipoli campaign. On her way there, found lifeboats from the French vessel Provincia, and took on survivors which broke Admiralty regulation stopping in the middle of U-boat infested waters, but the French Admiral was so pleased that he awarded the captain of Olympic with the Gold Medal of Honor. After two years of trooping duties in 1916, Olympic had garnered such a reliable reputation that at home in Great Britain, famous buildings and art galleries were named in her honor. In the early hours of May 12, 1918, the crew of HMT Olympic spotted a periscope on their starboard bow. This turned out to be none other than the German U-boat U-103. Instantly, like a clap of thunder in a thunderstorm, Olympic opened fire on the German U-boat. The German U-boat, in response, panicked and tried to dive as fast as possible down to 98 feet in evasive maneuvers, but it was too close. Olympic made a course change and her starboard propeller pierced open and cut open the side of the U-boat like a can opener, exploding the pressure hull and sinking the U-boat ultimately. HMS Davis took on survivors as Olympic did not stop and continued on her journey to France. Shortly after, the war was over and it was calculated that HMT Olympic had carried 201,000 troops and sailed over 184,000 miles, earning her the nickname Old Reliable. <laughs>